Um, even though I gave the title uh, uh, when I gave this, uh, when I, I thought of this lecture that uh, that who who was in charge or who was uh, who was uh, in charge for the plague and whether witches were in charge of the plague, I just uh, checked my material in connection with the plague because. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, in my recent research, I also dealt uh, uh, or are also used not only uh, the witch trial documents, but many other uh, historical sources connected to healing and medicine. And there were two large uh, source groups that I have not uh, mentioned yet. And uh, one of them was the miracle accounts, uh, which uh, were um, recorded at the uh, at a Marian shrine. Uh, I have also referred to this Marian shrine. Uh, and there, were, there are several miracle accounts uh, recorded, uh, so more than 300, which I could use uh, as a source material. And of course, I used uh, the different kind of uh, uh, medical uh, documentations uh, which were stored in the archives. So among them, I used the diaries of uh, uh, the the town physicians and uh, uh, the the documents of the uh, of the barbers and the, the bathers guild uh, from page for example from from the and from different kind of uh, local uh, uh, muni uh, municipalities like uh, mostly market towns and royal free towns where where the archives were uh, uh, allowed it but uh, but i also used uh, uh, mostly print material, 18th century print material, leash books, uh, recipe uh, books and medical uh, uh, books that uh, the barbers and the, and the midwives and the, and the, the sergeants uh, must have used. So out of all these documentary, uh, I tried to, to create that how people thought about the, the epidemic diseases and uh, what was their impression and whether uh, there was there a connection between the witchcraft accusations, the timing, the periodization of the witchcraft accusations, and the plague epidemics? So uh, I found uh, a very nice uh, uh, group of sources in the in the archives of Pécs, uh, which is in the uh, south of Hungary, and this is about the the plague hospital that how it was uh, established, how it was uh, equipped. And uh, uh, there were some uh, um, not only um, uh, archival, um, so not, not only, um, um, let's say, official the data and, uh, and, the, and the lists of the items and inventories uh, uh, connected to this plague hospital, but also a very vivid uh, uh, exchange of letters, uh, uh, which uh, uh, mostly originated from the uh, physicians, uh, the, the plague uh, barbers or plague uh, physicians, and uh, the priests who served in the plague hospital, and uh, between the, the, the magistrate of the town. And this was the point, uh, one of the points which I, which I would like to relate later. Unfortunately, we do not have uh, uh, an authentic uh, depiction how a, the plague hospitals uh, in Hungary looked. We do not have uh, any contemporary images, but this is a plague hospital uh, uh, from the from Malta from La Valletta and uh, according to the written sources the plague hospital in Pech uh, and in the, in the larger towns and cities where plague hospitals uh, were established looked somehow similar so uh, in this picture we can see uh, a, a priest uh, serving there uh, some uh, people suffering as laying on the bed and heal the, the so-called plague servants carrying a human body. And uh, here we, we, we can also see someone who, who is wearing uh, some kind of mask and uh, a strange robe which uh, uh, serves uh, protection against uh, 
the uh, the ladle uh, um, uh, air uh, around uh, the uh, the people who were sick of the plague. So uh, these hospitals were of course not that large as this one here in the picture, but we should imagine uh, it in a somehow smaller scale, let's say. So what is the region, what I am talking about, this is the very same region that I, uh, that I uh, examined in, the, in connection with the witch trial. So here is the shrine uh, uh, from where all these miracle accounts stem from. Uh, there, is a Francis, there was a Franciscan uh, friary there and the Franciscans look after uh, this shrine. So all the, the miracles that were connected to the, to the local uh, miracle working uh, Virgin Mary were uh, very carefully recorded by these Franciscans who uh, ran uh, this Marian shrine uh, in Jude. Uh, and uh, here you can see this uh, catchment area that, you, that I have already uh, showed you, <laughs> you can see here Ljubljana, so it is not very far from there actually. And uh, as I said, that there were almost 200, so 193 witch uh, trial documents from this uh, area that I collected. Uh, the, the miracle accounts uh, are more than 300 from this very area and they st uh, stem from uh, four different documents, three miracle lists uh, remained, and there is one uh, um, uh, uh, an investigation uh, where uh, uh, the, the testimonies uh, were, uh, were taken on the miracle working uh, uh, sculpture of the Virgin Mary, and uh, among these testimonies there were several miracles uh, uh, narrated or uh, uh, recalled uh, by the witnesses who were heard. So we we had these four documents, and uh, there were these uh, 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 several hundreds of, uh, or more than, uh, sorry, not several, but uh, 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 these uh, uh, approximately uh, uh, 160 uh, which trial documents. Uh, and but both contained uh, basically stories and uh, uh, when the witch trials uh, uh, had these uh, bewitchment narratives that I treated or that uh, or considered as uh, illness narratives then in the miracle stories are other illness narratives they are about the miraculous cures uh, and not about the bewitchment so uh, uh, somehow, e even though the, these are different topics, but they are also stories of uh, mostly of successful healing and not of uh, unsuccessful healing, like the bewitchment stories <laughs> in the witch, uh, witch trial documents. But uh, uh, now I do not want to, to, to elaborate or uh, to dwell more on this topic. So the, the, <clears throat> to compare uh, miracle stories and uh, and bewitchment stories, uh, but uh, I just uh, wanted to highlight that uh, uh, even even the, uh, for this occasion, uh, I would uh, I would refer to the to the witchcraft documentary as well. But I would mostly uh, talk about uh, the other uh, upon or based on the other sources as well. Here you can see the, that where the, the Marian Shrine is, that is, it was also built in the 18th century, this building, and uh, here you can see it a bit better resolution, probably, and here is the church, and there is the miracle working statue, which is uh, still there. So, this time, I would like to talk about, uh, if you remember, on the spheres, uh, on the different spheres, or the diff uh, of uh, medical knowledge and medical practice and healing. This is the sphere of the ecclesiastical healing mostly. And why I say this? Because uh, when I just checked the documents that were av available in connection uh, with the plague epidemics in the 18th century uh, period, uh, then it seems that according to my sources, 
the witch trial documents do not offer too much in connection with the plague. There are several interesting cases that could be connected to the epidemic. I will uh, talk about them a bit later, but mostly the sphere of the ecclesiastical healing and not the sphere of the popular healing, which dealt uh, with the plague. And the reason is probably that plague was not attributed uh, to any kind of uh, uh, supernatural being, but God. So plague was God's punishment, like almost all the epidemics uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in the, in the med medieval, early modern, and even the, even the antique times. So basically the explanation of the outbreak uh, for a plague epidemic was that it is our sins, I mean, our, the humankind's sins, that uh, brought about this misfortune and God's punishment uh, uh, is nothing but uh, this plague epidemic. So even though there were several recipes, several ways how the plague should be treated, very interestingly, uh, if someone or if a community was uh, um, uh, hit by the plague, then uh, it was uh, at the same time, uh, uh, it was very important to, to defend themselves against the epidemic on the one hand. On the other hand, it was very stressful according to the Christian moral that uh, one should suffer and through the suffering comes the purification. So uh, it is a kind of catarctic uh, uh, um, uh, experience that, uh, that finally uh, uh, would uh, would bring about uh, not only the, the the bodily purity but also the mental the, the spiritual purity as well. So uh, this is uh, also a kind of uh, magical way of uh, thinking. I mean that making or building up these parallels uh, between the the mental, the spiritual state, the spiritual health, and and the actual physical health, but. This is very much uh, involved uh, uh, in, uh, in 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 uh, in the the medical practices that were applied against uh, the plague, as we shall see it uh, uh, later. So mostly, the sphere of the ecclesiastical healing that dealt with the healing of the soul, and of course, uh, the the sphere of the official medical healing, and uh, was that. Uh, that uh, was expected to deal with the healing of the body and much less the sphere of the popular healing. Um, let me just uh, show you some of these treatises that uh, I examined uh, in connection with the plague. And uh, uh, as you can see here, there, there are some in Hungarian, uh, this is uh, uh, and, uh, and and some in uh, in German and uh, and also in Latin. So basically, they were meant for all the people uh, who were uh, in charge of healing the plague, learned people, and not for the people who could not even read in those days. So uh, uh, very interestingly, some of these. Uh, little booklet on uh, uh, treating the plague also contain a uh, different kind of amulet. Even one of them is called amuletum and the other one as well. So there are two uh, and amulet were part of, uh, of, of, uh, of those rare, uh, even uh, not learned, but lay medical practices that were applied against uh, the plague epidemic. And it is uh, rather interesting that even learned physicians suggested that one should uh, defend oneself against the plague by wearing something on the body which has a rather penetrating smell. And uh, most of these uh, little tracts uh, on plague agreed that uh, the uh, poorer people could use garlic against the plague and the garlic should be hung 
uh, from the neck like an amulet. They even uh, write it uh, literally that uh, this is an amuletum against the plague. And uh, on the other hand, uh, there were several uh, prayers written, like the, uh, the, the, the blessing of Zakaria, for example, which were used uh, against the plague as they put it on the, the sick people's body. And uh, even uh, one, or, uh, one or two of these uh, little booklets contain a depiction on the Zakari cross uh, and a suggestion that it is also useful if you put these prayers and this Zakari cross and this blessing on the body of the ailing person or you wear it as a defense against the plague. So as a kind of uh, 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 apotropaic uh, uh, device against the plague. On the other hand, all these written things uh, which were meant for the ordinary people uh, didn't meet a large audience, uh, of course. So mostly the trained and literate uh, doctors and barbers could read it and could use the, the different kinds of methods that, uh, that were offered uh, in, these, uh, in these books uh, uh, against the plague, for example. Um, uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, it is uh, just uh, one further uh, of these plague uh, manuscripts. Uh, this is a German one. And uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, the plague uh, uh, against the plague epidemics, as I said, not only uh, the, the trained doctors and the trained uh, uh, medical personnel uh, was called to a, a battle, but also the state itself handled the epidemic situation as a battle. So uh, it's not uh, uh, incidental that uh, the first uh, plague instructions uh, from the, uh, from the uh, uh, 16th century from Italy already included uh, the, uh, the armed forces uh, uh, in order to, to keep uh, the people uh, um, in order to, to force the people to keep the instructions uh, which were pre-written by the, mostly by the local uh, government uh, and, uh, and also, also the higher, higher levels of the state administration that how uh, plague should be uh, um, uh, localized and how it, how it should be uh, kept, uh, 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 how, how the contagion should uh, 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 should be kept uh, uh, and, and caught at certain places. So here in this picture you can see uh, that particular uh, plague instruction which was already uh, used in the Habsburg Empire. This is the first uh, um, uh, in, imperial plague, uh, plague instruction and this was uh, again uh, reused and reworked uh, during the 18th uh, century. So it came out, for, uh, uh, it was addicted uh, uh, in the, at the end of the 17th century, uh, uh, at, at 1679. Uh, and during the two uh, major plague waves in the 18th century, uh, which was uh, at the, between uh, uh, 70, uh, uh, 79 and 7013, and the next one was uh, 20 years later, between 1737 and 1742. So th this huge, uh, before this huge uh, 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 plague epidemic waves, uh, the, these uh, instruction, this uh, was, was reused and re-edited re and re-edited again. So this is why, why I thought that it would be very useful to, to put it right here. Uh, but what this, uh, what this uh, plague uh, uh, addiction is, uh, were against? So uh, it is that uh, in their introduction, they are very shortly explained that plague is the punishment of God. And then the, the emperor, who is the one who carries out, 
out uh, God's uh, request and God's will, uh, will also carry out with the help of the ecclesiastic uh, 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 authorities and also with the secular, with the help of the secular authorities, uh, the all these uh, defensive. Uh, um, um, uh, that the, uh, all the defense, uh, the uh, uh, defense against uh, against the plague. So uh, all all these addicts uh, um, um, uh, uh, distinguish uh, three different uh, phases or stages of the plague, and. Uh, the first stage is the preparation when someone gets to learn about the plague when only the uh, the pharma the uh, the news of the plague or the epidemic reach uh, uh, a particular community then this is the time for the preparation and then as the plague is approaching and we can remember that how how the the distance between the 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 vulnerable human body and the and the witch was is uh, against uh, according to the proximity then this is something which is very similar that uh, the first rumors or the first news on the plague generated a kind of general anxiety and this was uh, this uh, uh, aura of general anxiety when the community was about to prepare that something, something bad is going to arrive, something evil is going to arrive. And then when the plague was approaching, when, when the first merchants, for example, uh, arrived, that uh, we already met some people who, uh, who fell uh, in the plague, that is the when the second stage is uh, arrives, when the defense uh, should be started. And what do we mean? Uh, uh, and then finally, uh, the, the defense is, uh, has also several uh, grades as the plague is drawing, uh, uh, drawing more, uh, more closer and closer. And then the plague is there. And that is uh, already the, this defensive phase. And then finally, when the epidemic is over, then this is the uh, the period of the uh, of the uh, renovation. Uh, this is how these addicts are uh, somehow uh, not only uh, structuring themselves, but they also uh, very nicely adjusted to to this kind of. Uh, let's say mental disposition what the people uh, felt and experienced when such an such an event uh, uh, took place in their lives so uh, what what these addicts meant under uh, the caption of preparation for the plague this is when uh, uh, those people who were traveling were very carefully examined and uh, all the goods that were that were brought by the merchants, they were also very carefully examined at the boundaries of one particular uh, community. So uh, here in this picture, one uh, what I uh, show here is uh, it stems from Austria, uh, not from Hungary. From Hungary, I couldn't uh, find. Uh, uh, a similar authentic document, but I have learned that they also, the municipal courts or the magistrates, they also uh, made such kind of signed or very often sealed documents that uh, certain persons uh, uh, who are arriving from a region where the infection is there are not infected. Basically, so this is something which is a certificate that someone is not uh, infected and can enter uh, uh, the town walls, for example. Uh, so uh, it, it is also it was also one part of the preparation that these plague hospitals were erected, and a third part was that all these uh, spots where these. Uh, uh, examination of the people were carried out uh, were 
uh, established. So this is uh, again uh, one picture. Uh, 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 this is an ex voto painting uh, from Malta again, which is showing that uh, uh, here you can see the walled city, and here you can see these small uh, buildings where people were checked before entering or when those people who arrived and were infected uh, had to stay or this is basically the quarantine uh, area uh, which uh, one should uh, cross anyway if someone wanted to enter the city. So uh, basically uh, all the inhabited uh, uh, larger inhabited places were surrounded uh, by physical walls, physical boundaries, uh, which uh, were thought to prevent them uh, from the plague. And this is uh, the very site where uh, the military forces had the, uh, had the role because they were the ones who controlled all these, uh, um, all these boundaries uh, around uh, the different towns. And there was also a second uh, boundary, which somehow followed uh, the spread uh, of the plague. And uh, it was a, a, a real boundary uh, made up by uh, military camps. And uh, the soldiers were expected to, to spy the plague, basically, and then to prevent the people crossing these uh, geographical boundaries as well. So, uh, basically, they were made along rivers or uh, along particular geographical uh, locations, but they were not that uh, uh, they were not state boundaries in in the in the contemporary meaning. So basically, the plague was uh, imagined similarly like a kind of supernatural uh, invader, like the witches who were threatening the human environment. The plague itself as a kind of supernatural punishment, a godly punishment, was also uh, imagined somehow like something which is slowly invading the, the human environment. Uh, but uh, as I said, against the plague, uh, they already make use of, I mean, those, uh, the authorities and the, the, these imperial edicts reflected, uh, the medical knowledge was already made use of. So people already, uh, or the, the physicians already realized that uh, uh, the contagion is uh, 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 spreading uh, with, the, with, the human, uh, with, the, uh, with, uh, with the human connection. They didn't know yet that it was basically spread by the flea of, uh, of the rat uh, and, and, and by, by this Yersinia pestis. Uh, but, uh, uh, but uh, they were aware that this is something which one person can catch from another person. And this, this plague, it is something which is uh, just penetrating uh, the, the boundaries of the human body as well. So this is why it is rather interesting when I contested the different kind of imaginations that how witchcraft was and bewitchment was thought to make an effect on the human body and how a contagion was, uh, was imagined to contact the human body. And there were some similarities and uh, this was one of the similarities that how the barriers of the human body are penetrated by an unseen force like an epidemic or like bewitchment, like this unseen supernatural force uh, of the witch. So this was one point where uh, the imagination of how an illness attacks uh, the human uh, body uh, is, uh, could be somehow uh, both related to the plague and to the witches. But as I said, very interestingly, uh, plague was never uh, connected uh, to, uh, to any kind of communities or groups or these supernatural communities of witches, uh, even though the witches, uh, the belief on witches incorporated several ideas on uh, these supernatural illness demons. Uh, 
but uh, they were never uh, accused of bringing about the plague to any kind of communities. Uh, it was something, uh, a further similarity probably, that when there was this uh, constant uh, fear of uh, the different kind of unexpected and unexplainable uh, and uh, uh, things of the natural environment uh, and also on, on, on the different kind of, uh, on the world around a human being in general, that witches were one of the sources of this fear. And the plague was, was another situation, a contagion was another situation, which was also filled uh, with fear and uncertainty. And uh, somehow uh, they, People, uh, it seems, uh, at least according to my research and my, and my experience and my documents, they just didn't uh, uh, make a connection between the two. Um, but let me let me turn uh, turn back to this uh, 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 the idea of these barriers between the supernatural world and the, the visible world. And uh, and in terms uh, in terms in terms of the defense, so there was this physical defense, which was the the secular uh, part of uh, uh, or the secular part of this defense that they built up. They established different kind of uh, buildings or different kind of uh, uh, places where uh, where the contagion could be stopped by these uh, by these uh, physical barriers. But also they felt, I mean, uh, under they, I mean these communities and the members of these communities, that these boundaries should be somehow uh, turned more, more uh, turned stronger, or they, uh, they, they also needed an extra supernatural defense. And this was uh, then the turn of these supernatural uh, patrons and helpers the saints and uh, and also the Virgin Mary, who were very effectively called uh, for help uh, during the times of the epidemics, and uh, uh, interestingly, not in the witch trial documents uh, I find uh, uh, any any uh, uh, any data uh, uh, on uh, the different kind of uh, processions that were arranged against the plague, but. Uh, uh, but the miracle accounts uh, and also these uh, um, uh, archival sources mention them quite often, uh, that uh, processions were uh, often arranged, even though that, uh, that people knew that uh, when many people gather together, it could be rather dangerous in terms of the contagion, but still as they thought that the uh, plague is basically a punishment and uh, we should somehow suffer under this period because this suffering leads to the uh, spiritual uh, uh, purity against, so the sins, uh, we can re uh, read of the sins, then uh, uh, people took part uh, in these uh, uh, processions freely, even if the plague was there and people kept on dying. And normally, they were not allowed to to leave their uh, 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 their uh, their buildings or their houses because they were locked. Uh, in, in, at least in the cities, they were locked in, in into their uh, into the place where, where they lived. Uh, here, uh, I, I just show you that how uh, these uh, um, um, buildings uh, uh, look like. This is, this is a plan that how uh, a quarantine uh, uh, establishment uh, was planned. And this is one next to Vienna. This is how it looked. And this is also, uh, this is also a hospital, uh, uh, a lazaret it is called. This is a general uh, term for all the city uh, or municipal hospitals, Lazaretum or Lazaret. Uh, but uh, very often this is a synonym for the plague hospitals as well. And here we arrived uh, uh, to, to page already, uh, but uh, I will uh, skip it and uh, return to the procession uh, scenes. Uh, 
Uh, here you can see some Italian depictions on the plague, that how a city looked when the plague just uh, struck it. So one can see that uh, there are dead people and uh, all these carriages carrying the, uh, carrying the dying or the dead. And uh, it is basically the time of mess uh, uh, in, in cities. And here are the processions. So here are the carriages carrying the dead to the plague cemeteries. And this is something which is very nicely depicts that what the people hoped that if they go around the town and if they carry these miracle working images, then they will uh, bring uh, about uh, the, the supernatural protection. And uh, even if it, this picture is from uh, uh, from the the late uh, uh, 15th century uh, or uh, 16th century, sorry, uh, the procession could see uh, could seem uh, could look like very similarly in in 18th uh, in the 18th century towns. Uh, what I read in my archival documents, even in the city of Page, for example, the time uh, the magistrate. Uh, uh, and together with the clerical leadership of the town, they ordered uh, 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 regular uh, processions uh, during uh, the plague uh, in, the begin uh, in the beginning of the 1710s. So in Page, there were two plague epidemics uh, very uh, rapidly following each other. And the first one was uh, in 1710 and 11, and then a second wave uh, came two years later. And uh, during the first uh, 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 occasions, the, the magistrate ordered it several times that, uh, that people should go on a procession and they uh, should uh, uh, carry uh, some uh, miracle wor uh, uh, working uh, statues of the Virgin Mary and some pictures uh, with them and also the crosses. They even ordered that uh, what uh, prayers they should recite and, uh, and people were expected to go. And uh, right after uh, or even during the plague ep epidemic, uh, the whole uh, municipality took a vow that uh, they would erect uh, uh, chapels uh, dedicated uh, uh, to, the, to the successful um, um, that the uh, dedicated to the to the uh, to the different uh, so-called plague saints like uh, Saint Roche uh, or Saint Rosalie that uh, uh, that they successfully prevented them from the plague and quite often these uh, chapels uh, uh, remained even uh, uh, until now so let me just jump uh, back to uh, to this depiction uh, in page and uh, here you see two sites uh, which are very near to the graveyard, the particular plague graveyard uh, where it used to be in the 18th century. And uh, it was out of the uh, contemporary uh, city walls. So it was uh, uh, not within, uh, within the town, neither the plague hospital nor, nor the plague cemetery. And uh, the, this uh, whole uh, small hill is called uh, the Saint Roche uh, uh, Hill. Even today, this is very close to the, uh, the, the Faculty of Arts in, in Page, uh, uh, of the Page University. Anyway, so uh, here you can uh, see uh, there used to be a small statue of Saint Roche uh, included there. And uh, not, uh, not surprisingly, this uh, place was also considered the sacred site by the Ottoman Turks and there was a holy well here. It was uh, excavated and renovated. So this is a Turkish uh, sacred well and this is the, Saint, uh, the hill of Saint Roche. And this is just next to the hill, this uh, small uh, uh, shrine of uh, uh, so-called Idris Baba, he was also uh, 
uh, a physician actually and also a healing saint of the of the ottomans of the ottoman turks who were once lived in page they were uh, um, they moved pre, uh, uh, page uh, towards the end of the, the 17th century anyway so not very far uh, uh, not very long before the 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 plague epidemics uh, reached the uh, page and uh, then this uh, small uh, shrine was given to the Jesuit and the Jesuit uh, uh, consecrated it to Saint Rosh and Saint Rosalie and this was uh, this uh, small chapel served as the chapel of the plague hospital uh, as well so uh, then it has become a, a, a votive uh, chapel uh, and it served uh, as a Saint Rosh Chapel even, even, uh, even in the 20th century and then uh, uh, only after the, uh, uh, after the Second World War it was uh, um, then desecrated and, uh, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and was just uh, uh, again turned into a, uh, an Ottoman uh, um, um, not a sacred uh, shrine, but uh, uh, let's say a, a, a memorial of this uh, Idris Baba. And today it is again a sacred shrine. Uh, so uh, just uh, turning back uh, to to these processions, here you can uh, here you can also see that, and you can imagine that uh, how many people were uh, drawn uh, to this uh, um, uh, ecclesiastical event. Uh, and it also reflected in the in the miracle narratives and there are uh, there is one very nice miracle narrative that uh, when the plague was at the highest peak in the very uh, 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 in <clears throat> in almost the very same time uh, from where i uh, i also cited one of these bewitchment narratives so it is near Bonyhad, uh, where this uh, devilish mill and this, uh, these witches uh, did their evil deeds. So from that region, uh, from, from a neighboring uh, small village, the people arranged a procession and they uh, went to Pech uh, uh, and to Maria Dude, to this shrine uh, with this procession. And along the way, as, where the procession was uh, approaching to the Marian shrine, uh, the plague uh, just got threatened and withdrew and the people stopped dying and uh, all the, the, uh, the plague, uh, uh, these bubonic uh, um, um, uh, swells on the bodies uh, disappeared from the sick people and everyone got healed uh, because this was a votive profession, profession dedicated to the to the Virgin Mary of this Marian shrine so uh, basically this uh, procession was very similar to those uh, beliefs and very parallel to those imaginations that how the plague is approaching as a kind of a supernatural force as a huge uh, army and this was just an army against uh, a military army against the plague and how this uh, just uh, cleared away the road uh, which led to the Marian shrine and uh, the this sacred power just helped to heal the people so uh, this was uh, uh, i think that uh, the these sentiments and what these experiences what appeared uh, in this uh, um, uh, in these narratives can very nicely reflect that how the people could really feel when they felt uh, that uh, they uh, they were just set free from the high pressure of this epidemic situation um this is these are some some other further uh, depictions of uh, these plague processions and uh, here you can see saint sebastian uh, praying for uh, those who died uh, in the plague saint sebastian's cult basically 
was, uh, along with the, the cult of Saint Roche, was uh, re-established, uh, this medieval and long for, uh, uh, for God cult was re-established uh, by the, the Franciscans, the Capuchins and the, and the Jesuits in Hungary, especially at the plague-stricken regions. And uh, Saint Sebastian, uh, several churches were dedicated to Saint Sebastian. And for example, in Page, the, uh, uh, the Capuchins who took over uh, the care for the uh, for the uh, for the the victims of the plague and who established the first uh, plague hospital uh, and not out but inside the uh, the town they also uh, dedicated their church to to saint sebastian it is still uh, the church dedicated to saint sebastian anyway and uh, the depiction of saint sebastian appeared in in several churches several uh, marian shrines and in several votive churches like in osiak for example or uh, in peach or in, or in the maria Lute shrine here uh, here is one depiction one small uh, uh, little um, uh, um, uh, uh, sheet of paper with the depiction of uh, Saint Sebastian and this slip of paper, this breve, was used again uh, as, uh, as I was already mentioned, uh, a kind of amuletum, a kind of uh, defensive uh, uh, means uh, against the plague. Even if this is a, a a late uh, uh, or an early 15th century woodcut which was reproduced and reprinted but uh, this was definitely used uh, 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 this woodcut and this uh, slit of uh, uh, slit of paper uh, was used uh, as, as an amulet uh, against uh, epidemic diseases and here you can see the the plague altar of the former capuchin church uh, in uh, in Peach. Uh, it was uh, depicted by uh, a German painter from Osiek who moved to Page, basically, uh, and uh, uh, and here is the plague altar from from the Marian shrine, and here you can see Saint uh, uh, Sebastian, here Saint Roche, Saint Rosalie, and also the the very uh, widespread Maria Hilf depiction of the of the helping Virgin Mary, uh, who was uh, uh, also a chief protector. Uh, against the uh, the people uh, against the plague, I would just uh, show some uh, very uh, popular de uh, medieval depictions on Saint Roche from Hungary, and here you can see what I already mentioned: these small votive chapels, which were erected uh, uh, just to commemorate of a successful prevention and uh, uh, f from the plague epidemic and uh, uh, this chapel uh, stands uh, at the very side uh, out of uh, out of where that uh, uh, very uh, successful procession uh, started from what i mentioned previously and this is the uh, chapel uh, dedicated to uh, Saint Urban, but uh, there is an altarpiece there where you can see Saint Rosalie standing. Uh, these uh, these pictures are taken nowadays, so it is still an actively uh, uh, active cult place. And uh, this chapel uh, stands uh, in the vineyards on on the top of the Weinberg uh, around uh, this uh, small uh, village. Uh, I use the German term because uh, this, uh, this village and many of these villages uh, were inhabited by, by Germans who, German settlers who were settled by uh, during the 18th century in Hungary. And uh, <coughs> they also uh, brought uh, uh, the cult of these plague saints and uh, the veneration of the Maria Hilf uh, uh, to this region. Uh, what, uh, what I was talking, uh, uh, what I was talking about. So uh, here you can see that uh, it is not incidental that uh, the the vineyards and the, uh, these hills where, where the vineyards uh, uh, were were also uh, um, spread with these chapels because the cult of Saint uh, Urban is. Uh, 
uh, very much uh, in connection with the vineyards. He was one of the saints who protected the vineyards from the bad weather, from mostly from uh, um, uh, uh, thunder and, and hail storms. Uh, and uh, this is also uh, a cult of, uh, of uh, German origin here in this region. Uh, but uh, these chapels are also, uh, if, uh, if you imagine them, that they are out around the settlement. These, these are part of these uh, sacrificial uh, or sacred boundaries, uh, sacred barriers around the towns which were reinforced uh, during the plague, uh, plague times by these, uh, by these extra uh, uh, sacred uh, protection, like the, like the protection of uh, Saint Rosalie. Um, and finally, I would just like to show you the, the miracle working uh, icon uh, or a, a picture of the, of the Maria Hilf in Page in the same, same Saint Sebastian church. This was a votive uh, uh, depiction which was uh, uh, dedicated uh, by an unknown uh, uh, person during the plague, at, uh, the 18th century plague epidemic, the first plague epidemic. And this is this uh, church in the Marian shrine that I have already referred to. That, and the whole church was built as a votive church because the landlord uh, was also saved from the plague by the Virgin Mary. And he made a, uh, he took a vow and uh, had this uh, uh, had this votive church built, this Marian shrine. And here you can also see uh, the Saint Michael Chapel because Saint Michael was also a very common uh, heavenly protector against uh, the plague. He, here you can see that uh, so, some other depictions uh, how the people imagine the plague, and the. Uh, Last, uh, lastly, uh, at this picture, I would like to refer to the witch trials again, and whether, as I said, the witches had nothing really common, I mean, the witchcraft accusations and the plague epidemics. Uh, basically, during the plague epidemics, uh, the witch trials uh, were uh, not really off, uh, the, the witchcraft accusation stopped. There were no witch trials during the epidemics because the people uh, dealt with more important things than, uh, than the accusations. But right after the, the plague waves and right after uh, when the period of uh, uh, the renovation arrived, then, very interestingly, uh, always a peak of the witch trials uh, 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 formed. And this is probably because uh, these social tensions, which were uh, sedated uh, through the very strict uh, uh, um, uh, uh, authorities, uh, secular and, and clerical authoritative uh, <coughs> executions, uh, or executives, they, they were just let out again uh, on the one hand, uh, uh, and, 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 and the, the life just turned back to its, uh, let's say, normal, normal, uh, normal stream, yet perhaps uh, uh, some tension still remained, uh, and uh, witchcraft accusations could be one of these uh, uh, outlets where these tensions could be somehow sown. Uh, I am not sure whether it is uh, really <laughs> well grounded, but uh, perhaps this could be the reason why, why there is no coincidence, but uh, uh, this kind of uh, strange tendency that, can, that could be seen. But uh, why, why I chose this depiction is that it uh, shows really realistically that how people struggled with plague and what they experienced. And this experience is very nicely, uh, uh, can be very nicely detected in, in some of the bewitchment narratives, very interestingly. So even though uh, expresses where this witches were not, and any particular witchcraft accusations were not connected to the plague, but some of the cases, and the, uh, there are very few, but interestingly, they coincide with the plague waves. Some of these bewitchment narratives 
describe certain symptoms which are very similar to that of the plague. So they say that after the witch's touch, there are huge blackish uh, spots uh, appearing on the people's body. And then these spots swell. And then after when these people died, these uh, they looked like bubbles which uh, exploded and the and blood and different kind of liquids uh, came out of this uh, this uh, basically this probably this plague bubbles uh, who no, nobody knows it and no, nobody confirmed it uh, no doctors were uh, or physicians uh, uh, reaffirmed that they were the, they were this uh, plague uh, symptoms but it looks very uh, very probable that uh, uh, even the symptoms of the plague uh, were explained very interestingly as uh, the signs of, uh, of bewitchment. I know only two cases basically, but both are stemming from, uh, from the time of the plague. So uh, finally, what I wanted to, uh, uh, wanted to um, pay attention is that uh, uh, in this last picture, one can one could see the the main square in Osiek, uh, uh, in the Osiek fortress in the Truda, the the Saint uh, uh, Saint Trinity column, and these Saint Trinity columns were erected in the central parts of each and every town, which were which was rich enough to to allow to be built, uh, to, to erect uh, such statues. And uh, uh, they were just uh, the mementos and uh, the, uh, uh, the sites of memory that uh, God's eye is always on the people. And uh, uh, even though God helped them to, to escape from the plague, but uh, uh, it is also a memory of uh, uh, of their, their sinful behavior and that this sinful behavior can bring about uh, catastrophes and epidemics like, uh, like the plague uh, uh, itself. So thank you so much for your attention and questions and comments, if you have any. <laughs>